can't have fun at it, there's no point in doing it. You feel like she could be like the person you go to school with, you know, and her music is good and it's fun and it's up and kids like it. She's still my daughter, Deborah, who sings and is very successful at it. She is very grounded, and it's nice to see someone so young handle their success so well. I think luck could get you a break, but there's no such thing as a whole career based on luck. You know, you've got to have something to back it up. <laughs> been very very optimistic and I mean instead of just kind of dreaming about uh, becoming a performer I just always performed you know I just did I, I always did something about it and you know I used to watch the Grammy Awards and all the award shows and say you know, it's gonna be me someday and so I always thought very optimistically you know but now now that I see how many new artists come out and um, you know some really talented artists who their records may never see the light of day just because of timing and this and that you know I'm, I guess I'm lucky in that sense that I like writing songs that people can relate to on an everyday level. So, you know, I'm pretty much like an everyday kind of person, and that's, that's what I want, that's how I want to stay. You know, there are certain changes, but, you know, I'm just more into hanging out with my friends at home rather than, you know, going to a party because I'm gonna get a photo taken. You know, it's, and, um, so I know it's important to me, so, you know, hopefully I won't change too much. <laughs> In this edition of Cover Story with singer-songwriter Debbie Gibson, we join the everyday teen star in a celebrity-filled Hollywood party celebrating the release of her new album, Electric Youth. When Debbie was two years old, she asked her parents for a guitar, but Joe and Diane Gibson thought a ukulele was more suited for her size. At five, Debbie started taking piano lessons and writing songs. Debbie and her three sisters, Karen, Michelle, and Denise, all took music lessons. But Debbie was the only one to want to pursue a musical performing career. By the time Debbie graduated from Calhoun High School in Merrick, Long Island, she had become, at 17, the youngest artist in the history of pop music to write, perform, and produce a number one single, Foolish Beat, from her triple platinum first album, Out of the Blue. Now with her second album, Electric Youth, Debbie has proved to the music world and her critics she's more than just another teenage passing fancy. Debbie Gibson is a real talent to be reckoned I've, with. I've uh, studied piano since I was five, and I started doing theater at that time also. You know, I, I just got a lot of experience, took a lot of, um, you know, a lot of classes in dance and singing and, and just everything. Well, the first song I ever wrote was when I was five, and it was called Make Sure You Know Your Classroom. I couldn't even actually write, so my sisters had to help me write out the, uh, the words. But um, that was about starting school. And I wrote on and off about different experiences. I mean, we got a dog, and I wrote a song called My Puppy Grew. And we got, you know, we went to visit my relatives on the farm, and I wrote a song, you know, just any, I would just write songs about anything. And of course, they were so silly then, those songs. But, you know, the more I experienced, the more the songs you know, I, you know, my mother started saying, hmm, maybe we have something here, you know. And um, I wrote seriously from the time I was um, 12 years old, I would say. Sometimes 
people just assume that parents like to push their kids into business. And the great thing about my parents was they, they always said, whenever you want to stop music lessons, tell us if you want to. And if you want to continue, go right ahead. The, you know, we always had the option. They didn't, they didn't put a gun to our heads and say, you know, you have to become a star or anything like that. So um, that was always really good to know because it's really sad. I've seen a lot of little kids get pushed into the business by their parents. And I mean, they're burnt out by the time they're 10. So if she were happy, you know, if she would be happier in another field, I would encourage her to do it. Because I really do believe you go around once in this life and you should be happy. So my mother says, you know, if you want to go be a doctor, go be a doctor. If you want you know, she just says, whatever you want to do, I'm behind you 100%. Teacher, um, his name was Morton Estrin, and he used to always say, you know, you, you could be a wonderful concert pianist, but um, yeah, I never really wanted to be a concert pianist. I, I like the hyper atmosphere more. <laughs> a synthesizer and a drum machine and you know when I was like 13 I was working on my own demos at home and learning you know which was probably the best thing I could have done because when you go into another studio you're just at the mercy of um, you know wh whoever whoever else is there and um, it was great because I I was able you know I always had so many ideas in my head because I'll sit at the piano and I'll, and I'll ad lib and I'll basically come up with an arrangement so all I really needed were, was the, the tools to um, uh, to get this on tape and um, so now, then we upgraded to a 12-track studio, and now we're upgrading to 24. So I'll be able to do my actual records <laughs> in my home. <laughs> and I never thought of Deborah as anyone special, you know, growing up. She was just my sister, you know. But someone very normal can do what they want to do. If, you know, if they have a certain amount of talent, and if they try and, you know, reach the right channels, and it's encouraging, in a sense. I really look like an everyday person. Um, I sort of blend in with the other, like, thousand teenage girls that are walking around the mall. <laughs> so, you know, it's not that it's like, um, that I'm, I'm like crazy looking or very rock and roll looking, you know. So I, I, I'm not, I don't call that that much attention to myself, you know. A lot of people, I think, know my songs more than they know my face. And, um, you know, I'd rather someone come up to me and say, oh, I like your new record. You know, it's more important. the ideas kind of pop into my head they just do so I realized that that was kind of my niche when I was little you know playing piano and stuff like that I was playing a lot of demos for Atlantic and when we were first uh, recording Only in My Dreams, Atlantic put me together with Fred Zarr. You know, so we, we know of this great producer, and, and uh, he's mainly done arranging, you know, but even a lot of the arranging stuff he did, he, he should have gotten like a production credit because it was a lot of his work. And, um, you know, so I said, great, you know, let's give it a try. When I was first introduced to her, she hadn't made any records yet. She had made demos of a lot of songs, and I was told that she was very talented. And when we met, you know, it took a little while, you know, she's kind of watching out, you know, for who's working with her. But we got along real well. And uh, she's very talented. She's, uh, she's extraordinary to work with. She really knows what she's doing. And uh, it's, it's a pleasure to work with. I 
always had in mind, you know, from the time I was really young, that I, you know, I wanted to do an album of all my own songs. And, um, you know, so when I first saw, like, the first album, it was like, wow, it's vinyl. The songs are actually on vinyl, you know. That was just thrilling. It was really exciting, because, I mean, even making demo tapes is exciting, just to have your work uh, you recorded. And, um, but the fact that it was done um, in the right way, you know, just not as a demo, it was, it was definitely, uh, you know, big, big dream come true. <laughs> My family and friends helped tremendously by calling the radio stations, walking the records right into the clubs. You know, once that single started doing well, I then had the opportunity to do the album. So, um, you know, it, that was great that everyone was willing to, to help so much. <laughs> well, it took a lot of uh, support from the family and friends and a record company to get her going. And uh, everyone, there were a lot of skeptical people, but. It, Pretty much everyone who was close to her had faith that she could become someone big. So everyone kept trying and it happened. One day I came home from school and I got a message on the answering machine from my mother. She was calling from work and she said, uh, you know, oh, uh, you know, such and such a station played it today. And I was like, oh my God, you know, when is it going to come on again? And of course it was in this light rotation. It was being played like every 10 hours or something. <laughs> so we had the radio going nonstop and we happened to be in the car. And uh, I was with my dad and my younger sister and my mom. And actually, I was on the way back from voice lessons in the city. And we had the radio on low, because we, we listened to the station constantly, waiting for it to come on. And then I heard the first, like, uh, the 12-inch starts, doom, 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 shh, doom, doom. And I heard that, and I was like, oh my god, is this it, you know? Turn it up. And my dad was, like, driving to the beat. We thought he was going to drive off the road. And uh, that, that was really exciting. It took us by surprise that day, definitely. <laughs> Recording and performing are very different. I mean, it's great to be in the studio because you can um, experiment. You have lots of time to work things out. But the bottom line is, like I said, if you can't do it live, then you can't do it because um, there are a lot of people who are sort of created in the studio. And they, you know, they sing things word at a time and they really can't sing. And, and um, so when you get up there on stage, you know, you really prove yourself to people. Please welcome Debbie Gibson. <laughs> general is hard but you know it's it's worth it for the hour and a half two hours you're on stage um, you know because I'm more of like a homebody so I missed my I missed moms and grandma's great Italian meals and stuff like that you know but um, I love the tour bus actually She can come back, you know, from uh, doing a show and be able to sit down with her sisters and play Monopoly or whatever, you know. And uh, where a lot of people, after they perform, they're out in the bars or whatever, you know. And she's, the family has been a tremendous help. There's no question about it. Her sisters work with her, you know. Her sister Michelle does a lot of her styling and her clothing. And it, uh, it's kind of like the, uh, the dream for any parent, you know. The children's careers and lives are really meshed together. putting together like an elaborate production because I know when I go to a show I want I want to be entertained so you know I put together choreography and you know had the piano rolled on for a few of the songs and you know we had the ramps and, and the band they were all, they were pretty much all guys from Long Island 
And, um, you know, everyone in the beginning said, oh, don't you think we should just call, you know, regular touring musicians? And I said, no, I, I sort of want to put together a band that I, I know I can keep working with. And, um, you know, they kind of blew everyone away, so that was, that was exciting. <laughs> Lost in Your Eyes video I co-directed and I, uh, I drew out a storyboard with like stick figures and stuff like that. I sent it to Jim Yukich who also he directed my last video also and um, he was cracking up when he got it because I mean it was like it, it was a pitiful pitiful artwork but the video stuck stayed true to the, the uh, that original storyboard I made so it was just kind of like seeing a cartoon come to life and um, I want to get more involved in the editing process. That's something I really haven't had a chance to do, you know, because they worked here in L.A. and I was busy doing stuff in New York. And um, I'd like to, when I have some time, maybe take a film course, you know, something in film production. difficult it's not all it's not all glamour you know definitely not so I think that everything I did when I was a lot younger really helped to prepare me for this for what I'm doing now all right we have just received the official announcement Debbie Gibson is in the building Dance Party USA asked me if um, I wanted to take part in this, uh, you know, win a free concert at a school contest. And so, you know, it was like kind of like a school spirit thing. Whichever school sent in the most postcards, I would go and, and they would tape the show at the high school and I would perform like a few songs. But we decided once we were there, we did a whole concert for them. And it was so much fun because that was something I could really relate to. Debbie Gibson! Yeah! Yeah! You think we should probably get her to come back and do another one tonight or what? I'm like more at home on stage than I am probably anywhere. So um, that, that's the best part about it, you know, coming right in contact with the fans and, um, you know, getting that instant audience response and, and just seeing everyone have a good time and singing along with the songs. And, you know, that's, that's, what, the, I, I, that's my favorite part of it. <laughs> I guess in school there were like three different reactions. There were those who were sort of resentful. They said, oh, you know, she happened to have a lucky break and, and parents with money, which was so untrue. My parents, you know, my mother was a secretary. My dad works for the airlines. Um, and then there were those who suddenly were like, uh, oh, yeah, I know her. She's my best friend, you know. <laughs> and then there were my friends. And, you know, luckily I was able to tell the difference. And um, my friends just remained my friends because obviously my close friends knew that I was working on this you know, working in my studio at home and stuff instead of going to a party. And, you know, they really saw that it involved sacrifice so they can appreciate, um, you know, all the work that went into it. She's still very much the same. Her room is a mess. She hates to do the dishes. <laughs> you know, um, there are definitely like two sides of her. The personal side, which is very young, and the professional side, which is very mature. You know, she loves to go out with her friends, and she loves to gab on the phone, and we still talk about the phone bill, and, you know, all of those things. But on the uh, professional side, she's, you know, she's got it all together. excited about the new album because we we spent like four to five months on it which is to me you know good amount of time not like a month and a half you know <laughs> so I feel much much more strongly about this album well the song electric youth basically is about um, treating young people like people and taking their ideas seriously because when when my records first started coming out everybody sort of capitalized on my age 
oh, young, 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 young. And I was sitting there saying, what's the big deal? I've, I've met a lot of kids, you know, young kids, who have lots of great ideas. And look at, look, at, uh, look at the Olympics, you know. You see 15 and 16 year olds winning the gold medals. And, um, you know, so I don't think it should be that big of a deal. I think, you know, um, music is for all ages. I think um, she's going to have a very long career if that's what she wants. The records are doing great, you know, her appearance is doing great. Um, and we had, because it was her second album and the first one was so successful, we had the opportunity to spend more time when we wanted to. So we didn't have to settle for anything. It was great. very happy <laughs> and um, you know I don't know if there, there are that that many people that can say that I mean a lot of people are unhappy at their jobs because it's just not what they really want to be doing and I'm just really thankful that I can be doing what exactly what I want to be doing and you know because the fans out there keep buying the records it's like you know I can keep doing it for myself and for them and it's a that's a really great feeling working on writing a screenplay. Um, I, I used to do TV commercials and theater, so I'd like to get back into doing, um, you know, maybe a film and, um, and also theater. And, you know, because, because I can write and produce and, and arrange, I mean, you know, someday when I want to get married, which is kind of in the, it definitely in the fu way, uh, far future, but, um, you know, I think, I, well, I can stay home. I can write and produce for other artists. And, you know, I, there are a lot of aspects of this business that I'd like to explore. So I'll, I'll keep myself quite busy. I think I need all this time. I'm glad I started this young. <laughs> An insurance salesman makes a business of making widows on diamonds today at 6. Now, stay tuned as Sonny and Rudy go under the knife on Bustin' Loose, next on USA.